Today we will see remote code execution, how it can be used to exploit a service or a program running in a remote target system. For this attack we will be using Kyoptrix 1 as our target system. This can be downloaded from a site wallhub.com. Kyoptrix is a Linux based system which is running a Samba service that we are going to exploit. Now before we proceed further with our attack, let us get a quick overview about remote code execution and Samba. Remote code execution, in short we call it RCE. In this attacker executes an arbitrary code on the target system. Now this arbitrary code can be any malicious program like a reverse shell to create a backdoor. Now this is possible when remote application have some kind of vulnerability like misconfiguration or buffer overflow. Let us see Samba. Samba is an open source program which is used to enable file sharing between Linux and Windows system. Now this is also used to enable Linux system to be a part of Windows domain. Now let us see our attack. For the lab setup we are using VMware. You can use any other virtualization software like VirtualBox. Now in this we will need a attacker system and a target system. For attacker machine we are running Kali. This can be downloaded from Kali.org. For target we will be using Kyoptrix that is downloaded from wallhub.com site. Once you download the file go to this open virtual machine. Go to the folder where you have extracted the Kyoptrix. Select the file and open it. Once you boot this you will get a login screen like this. So we don't have a login to this system and we don't have IP address of this system. Now we will get the full access to this system by using remote code execution exploit. So let us go back to attacker machine. First let us get the IP address of this attacker machine by using the IP command. So here we can see that this is our IP address and this is the subnet we are using. Now we are going to scan this whole subnet to find what are the IPs are live in this subnet so that we can find the IP address of our target. For this we will do the ping sweep and this can be performed by using nmap. Now nmap is a de facto tool for scanning. SN is the option which is used to perform the ping sweep that is sending the ping request to all the IPs in subnet and based on the response we will see what IPs are live and from that we can find the IP address of our target. Now this is the list of IP addresses that it found which are live in this subnet. Here we can see that dot two is the default gateway, dot one two eight is our attacker machine and the remaining is dot one four three. So this must be our target. Let us get more detail about it like what are the ports are open in that, what services are running. To do that we will do the version scan. To do the version scan we will use nmap. We will use the option V and here the as option is for the stealth scan. Now this requires a root privilege so we will get the sudo command. The version scan will list what are the services are running on the ports which are open and what are the version of those services. Whereas the S is for the stealth scan, it is also called a sync scan. This is used so that it's not easy to be detectable on the target system. This is because uh, the sync scan doesn't do the full three-way handshake. It sends the sync request and based on the response gets the information about the ports which are open. Now here we get the list of ports which are open and we have the services and version. So here we can see that on port 139 Samba service is running but we don't have the version of this Samba. So to get uh, the version, version is required because uh, we are going to select our exploit based on the version. So to get the version, we will use Metasploit framework. To start the Metasploit framework, we use the command msf console. This Metasploit framework having multiple modules 
which are used for different purpose like there are modules which is used for exploitation there are module which is used as a payload and there are module which is used as auxiliary auxiliary means for additional purpose for supporting purpose like for scanning or to create a listener so now let us search for the module to find the version so we are using smb version because uh, the samba is using smb protocol underneath so here we can see that we have one module here smb version so this auxiliary module can be used to find the version of the samba that is running on the target system so we will copy this and to use this we'll use the command use then give the full path of this module now in here it requires certain options certain parameters before using this module so let us see what are the options it required here we can see that it required the r hosts this is the target ip address so to set the r host we use the command set so we have given the ip address of our target machine this is done now we can use the we can run this module by using the command run here we can see that it has found the version is 2.2.1 you can see that samba 2.2.1 you can now go back now we will find the exploit so we have to search the exploit for samba to find the exploit we use the same search keyword and that is search command and we use the samba keyword so here we get the long list of exploits we get the exploit for different os but we need it for the linux and here we have these all these different uh, exploits but how do we know that which exploit is going to work see one thing is here we can see that there is a rating is given like normal average excellent great here we can see that this exploit is having a great rating so it means there is a high chance of this uh, exploit to work on the target system now let us get more information about this to get the information about any module we can use the info keyword and give the full path of that exploit now here we can get the detail so this is uh, it performs a buffer overflow like we have seen that remote code execution can be done if there is a vulnerability like misconfiguration or buffer overflow and uh, here it is given that it's applicable to version 2.2.02 2.2.8 so the version which is running on our target system is 2.2.1 so there is a high chance that this this can work on the target system so to use this exploit, exploit we use the command use and give the path of that exploit now it is also required certain options to be set so let us see what are the options so it required our host it also required our port but is already set to 139 now for setting the our host the command set our host as the target ip and then we can give the command run so here we can see that some sessions been created but uh, it's not persistent the session is been closed 
all right so let's stop it so there might be possibility that the code that is executing on the target system is not working so we will use our own payload for setting the payload use the command set payload and we will use the reverse shell payload So this payload we can set. You can also use the command show payload so that we can get the list of payloads which can be used. Now this is the common payload to create a reverse shell. Once the payload has been set, we can again give the run command and see if it works now. Okay, so here we can see that the session 5 is open. Now we got the access to the system. So let us see if we have uh, got the full access. So for that, we use the command Who am I? So that you can get the by which user you have logged in into the system. Here we can see the root. So it means that we have the full access to the system. We can use also the id command to see that we have got the root access. So that's how the remote code execution exploit can be used to get the full access into the target system. I hope you enjoy the video. See you next time. Take care.